Hey there, I'm Jackie Ferris. Louis Comfort Tiffany was an artist ahead of his time. His landscapes started out as watercolors and oil paints, but then he translated them into beautiful colored glass. A new exhibit here at the Delaware Art Museum shines a light on his brilliance. Get ready for a very colorful show. The 302 is headed your way. Hey there, you may not think of windows and lampshades as artwork, but the next half hour will shine a light on exactly why you should. We're at the Delaware Art Museum and I'm joined by Heather Campbell Coyle to talk a little bit about a new exhibit that features the vast works of Lewis Comfort Tiffany. Heather, thank you so much for joining us. Great to see you, JC. So let's talk about the mystique behind Lewis Comfort Tiffany. Yes, so Lewis Comfort Tiffany, uh, born and raised in New York. He's actually the son of the jeweler and the shop owner that we still have, Tiffany and Company. Um, that, was what his, that was his father's business. So he's born into the world of artistry. He studies actually painting first. He travels around the world, but eventually becomes engaged in decorating projects. So he's decorating people's homes. And part of that um, it really gets him engaged with the ideas of light and lighting and leading to his windows and his lamps that are probably the things he's best known for. So let's talk a little bit about, this is one of this, what you have on display, um, comes from one of the largest collections um, in existence. Can you tell us where it came from and why it's so unique? Sure, so the title of this exhibition is Lewis Comfort Tiffany, Treasures from the Driehaus Collection. The Richard Driehaus Collection in Chicago is one of the largest, most extensive, most beautiful collections of Tiffany that you can imagine. Uh, Tiffany works in all areas. He is working in glass, he's working in um, all sorts of uh, metals as well, decorative objects of all types, and the Driehaus collection is deep in all of them, but particularly well known for the stunning collection of windows and lamps. When you look at them, they're just so gorgeous, and I read that um, Tiffany really wanted to capture the pure quality of color through light. And when you look at windows, you know, especially the one behind us, you can really see, you know, it's just so vibrant. You know, a painting is one thing, but it's like a painting that's been um, electrified almost. And it's, it's quite a skill. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, just what goes into or what went into putting together these creations. Absolutely. So one of Tiffany's real innovations is, you know, most of his innovations are in the world of glass and being able to really almost paint with glass. So Tiffany would work with, sometimes with artists or they might be in-house artists. You can see the window behind us is actually part of the Delaware Art Museum's permanent collection. It is a work by, designed by Howard Pyle. So Pyle would have done a painting of the scene and then Tiffany's designers would go and look at the painting and figure out how you're gonna piece that out with glass. They would draw, draw what would be called a cartoon that would give sort of the, where the outlines for the lead, this is leaded glass, right? That's what sets it, would go. And then other artisans would be making glass. Tiffany's studios made various types of glass. Um, and with various textures that hadn't existed before. And then someone else would choose the glass for each window, it would be cut, pieced into these incredibly ornate uh, windows and lampshades. So it's really, it's a group project. This is certainly not a single man's effort, um, although Louis Comfort Tiffany obviously was the, the head of the company. So as far as the, the team effort, um, you mentioned that he worked with a lot of women and one of his designers, one of his you know best designers was a woman. Clara Driscoll is one of the best known of Tiffany's in-house designers. She was uh, sort of the head of the people who pieced the lamps and she designed many of the lamps, sometimes based on photographs, looking at flowers and other materials and her journals have been found within the past um, couple of decades that have really give, have put some insight into how involved she was in Tiffany's glass company. Other windows might be designed by female artists. 
um, as well. So the Delaware Art Museum has a second set of Tiffany windows, which is actually downstairs in the exhibition, and it, they were designed by Lydia Field Emmett, a female painter. Now, when you look at these, um, these works of art, um, you don't realize that these take a considerable amount of time and they were very particular. They would put something up and if it didn't quite um, you know, translate, they would take it apart and put it back together again. So it really was a collaborative effort, as you had said. Absolutely a collaborative effort. In order to get the effects they wanted, which were sometimes groundbreaking and new, Tiffany's windows were really very innovative. They would um, be layering glass sometimes, and you can imagine you'd have to sort of try that out and using different patterns of glass and then perhaps putting something on top. One of my favorite windows in the exhibition has this elaborate sort of uh, frame that involves river rocks around it, but then it, the center panel of this window is a landscape, and the landscape actually recreates what a painter would do in atmospheric perspective, where it kind of gets hazier and grayer in the background. They're able to recreate that by layering the glass and choosing different colors, and it's just incredibly sophisticated use of glass that must have taken a fair amount of trial and error to get there. Now this is called opal Lessent glass, is that right? Much of Tiffany's glass, he is, there's lots of kinds of glass in Tiffany, um, and some of it is opalescent, some of it is a favril, was actually the term he invented. He was really trying to reinvent ancient types of glass, and he, um, his beautiful, shimmering, iridescent, opalescent glasses, he often termed favril. But there's also drapery glass, which is the glass he would use to make sort of the folds of clothing. So the glass is literally kind of folded when it's hot, so it creates this texture. Rippled glass, where you have a much smaller um, uh, area getting textured. Um, all sorts of uh, confetti glass, where they're throwing uh, cold glass onto heated sheets of glass, so you get what looks like a confetti on top. So there's all sorts of ways he's creating glass. Excellent. When we get back, we're going to talk more about Tiffany. We'll be right back. I'm Caitlin Dykes, lead interpreter at the Zwanendale Museum. We find the best shipwrecks on the 302. Welcome back. We're talking about the genius of Lewis Comfort Tiffany in terms of windows and lamps and, and just really beautiful landscapes. And we were talking a little bit about, you know, the different techniques that basically um, Tiffany and his craftsmen and women um, created. So he really was an innovator because nobody else was doing this before. It was, they were painting on glass, right? Well, people were certainly using colored glass, but the level of detail and the sort of painterly effects he's able to get are really new and innovative. He's really getting a different depth in these pictures. Now, it's kind of interesting to see how you can take a technique that's a flat surface and then translate it into, you know, the dome of a lampshade. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, being able to do that and just the, the, the majesty of it all? Yeah, so this show has some of the most spectacular Tiffany lamps in it. It has the dragonfly lamp, which is one of his most famous designs, and perhaps my favorite, the wisteria lamp, which is where you have just these this pale purple blooms that come dripping down and the, the edge is uneven. It's just incredibly elegant. And this was one of the lamps that, Chris, that we know that um, Clara Driscoll designed, uh, pieced with hundreds of tiny pieces of glass. Um, and so these beautiful lamps, um, you know, were really an important thing that Tiffany innovated as, as a studio and really changed how American interiors looked and were lit. It's really interesting to see, and as part of the, the exhibit, you know, there's a focus on nature and the outdoors. It's really interesting to see how, you know, they incorporate things like the dragonflies or flowers into an object that you put into your home that has a, a purpose. Absolutely. So Tiffany was always inspired by nature. So there is most of the work in this show, you can find elements of floral forms in both the lamps. There are lamps inspired by peonies and clematis um, and fall flowers as well. Um, and then the, the vases, the blown glass vases are extraordinary. And the examples in the Driehaus collection are, they're larger and more beautiful than other ones I've ever seen. Uh, so there are, there's a Jack in the Pulpit vase, which is just a majesty in these deep iridescent tones. Mm -hmm. 
When it comes to the lamps themselves, can you talk a little bit about how they're, you know, what's the, the process? I mean, I don't think a lot of people understand exactly how these things are put together. And it's not just the shade itself. I mean, the stem, the base. I mean, there was a lot of thought that went it beyond the shade itself to make it like a, a whole package. Sure, so glass, of course, is only part of the story of these lamps. Those incredible shades are standing on some really beautifully crafted uh, bases that were something I had never thought that much about until really we were installing this show and getting to see the extraordinary detail and thought that is put into the turn of a fiddlehead fern or these uh, beautiful fish that are set in the base of one of the lamps. Just incredible uh, types of different craftsmen that had to be working for Tiffany to make and design these really extraordinary objects. And they're everything from, as you mentioned, from something you have on your table to fully tall lamps that will light up a room. Yes, yeah, so we do. the show has one big standing lamp. It has many table lamps. Some of them actually probably don't give that much light off. It wouldn't really light your room as well as you might hope, but they were extraordinary decorative objects. Mm -hmm. And that's why they were so popular? Absolutely. These were uh, high-end items made to make a statement in your interior. So when you have something that's so beautiful and so sought after and kind of like a, a prestigious item in the home, there are, have to be a lot of people who were um, inspired to, to make similar lamps like it. Sure, when you go online to look for anything Tiffany, what you're really gonna find is a lot of Tiffany-inspired stuff that's still being made today. People are making all sorts of uh, lampshades and other glass pieces inspired by Tiffany to this day. So when someone comes to check out the exhibit, what do you think, you know, the must see, you know, just the breathtaking moment for you is? So for me, there are a couple of the landscape windows, uh, the river of life window with its extraordinary irises and um, the other landscape window, which I think is just called a landscape window with the atmospheric perspective that just knock your socks off. And then as far as the lamps go, you can't beat the wisteria lamp. Um, and the really extraordinary detail that is in that dragonfly lamp. Excellent. When we come back, we're going to talk more about the Tiffany Exhibition. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jen Bowes, the Executive Director of the Greater Wilmington Convention and Visitors Bureau, and things are happening on the 302. Welcome back. We're talking about the collection of Tiffany that's going to be on display here at the Delaware Art Museum. Now, Heather, it's not just the beautiful windows and the beautiful lampshades that you had mentioned. There's also a, a, a lot of gorgeous um, vases that are, some defy gravity, I would think. There is one that it's like this beautiful iridescent and it, it's a flower and it kind of like part of it flaps over. It's just amazing what they were able to do with glass. Absolutely. This is the part of his career that Tiffany actually was probably proudest of was the incredible innovations in blown glass that the studio was able to make. And so these floral form vases, as they are often called, they included um, all sorts of beautiful floral forms, but as you said, nothing is more of a dramatic knockout than that Jack in the Pulpit vase with its deep iridescent colors. And as you may guess from the form of that vase, these of course weren't really meant to hold flowers in our house. Um, these were decorative objects in and of themselves. So you, many of the, their shapes don't really lend to putting a flower in them. I wouldn't imagine not. I'd be nervous that they would tip over. Um, there's another one that is just, it doesn't seem like it's a very deep vase but it's just so beautiful it's a tulip and right. it's it's is it um, partially metal yes so some of his uh, vases were designed to sit in these very narrow slender uh, bases that were metal to, to keep them up and he worked with various mount makers to do that it's really interesting when you look at the sides of some of them you can tell that it's several different glasses that were laid on top like maybe you have the flower itself but then the petal is a different kind of glass that must have been very difficult to do absolutely it seems to be an incredible tour de force of glass making and there are many techniques actually happening in these glass and many as you say there are layers in them as well so they really have um, are a great thing for close looking. Spend some time looking at these 
objects and thinking about the challenge of making them is really wonderful. It must have been a challenge to, you know, put these on exhibit themselves because you really have to be thoughtful about what you do with light. So how do you, how do you tackle that? Well, we have amazing preparators here at the Delaware Art Museum, um, John Schaff and John Gibbons, and we have some other contractors, but John Gibbons is just a master of lighting the artwork, no matter what it is, and the care and thought that he put into um, lighting those vases. So the, the lamps are all lit with light bulbs, so you get a sense of how bright they were or were not in their day, and the windows are all lit by light boxes. And then having to combine that in the room with cases that we needed to light with the vases in them and make those vases really glow. It's, it's really an amazing skill. And it's something that you should just kind of take your time with as you go through and just to kind of like appreciate it because it is painting with light. Absolutely, this is a, a great day visit to come and see this work. It takes some time to look at, for sure. Now, there um, is a, an object that you guys have. It looks like a little box. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Because that's a departure. We have vases, we have windows, we have lampshades, but then we have this box. Sure. So Tiffany um, Studios made a range of objects from these incredibly um, elaborate windows that were very, very expensive to homes, objects for the home that were like, that were made of metal mostly, often desk sets. Um, ink wells, objects like that, that were for much more ordinary, you know, middle and upper middle classes class audiences. So there's a range of objects in the show, although I will say in this show, even the boxes and things tend to be the most elevated versions because it's such an extraordinary collection. And Tiffany no longer makes these things. Correct. So Tiffany and um, the Tiffany Studios went out of business in the 1930s. The Great Depression did them in, and some changes in style as well. So these are all highly collectible things now. So when someone comes out to take their time and go through the exhibit, um, there's also a, a new cafe where they can kind of luxuriate, you know, before, after, during, whatever. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, that addition to the offerings here. We're so excited to have our new cafe, Caffeina, open. Those of us who work here who constantly need caffeine to keep doing all these things, we can now have very elegant, very delicious coffees, as well as lovely desserts and salads and sandwiches. So it's great to have our uh, new cafe partners open here. Because it's all about the experience. No matter what the exhibit is, just the experience of, you know, enjoying, discovering, you know, that kind of thing, right? You can find all sorts of new things, including new food here, which is great. Absolutely. So tell us, how long does the, uh, the Tiffany exhibit run? Sure, the Tiffany exhibit is on view and through June 5th. And if somebody wants to find out more information about when you're open or how much tickets are, where do they need to go? Sure, so at delart.org, our website has exhibition information and also exhibition about, and also information about all the programs that support this exhibition. We'll be doing tours every Sunday. Um, that's a great way to learn more about it from our wonderful guide corps who's been training on Tiffany. And then there's also a couple events related to the show. So we got to check out that website. Absolutely. Fantastic. Heather, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We'll be right back. information on the Tiffany exhibit and the Delaware Art Museum, you can visit delart.org. That'll do it for this week's episode of the 302. We're going to take you from beautiful colored glass to the beauty of the great outdoors with beauty shots from the Brandywine River. Until next time, I'm Jackie Ferris. Tell them you saw it on the 302.